Good afternoon. Uh, this is Steve Van Cura at Bread of Life Bible Study. The topic for this uh, particular lesson is if you can see and believe the invisible, then you can do the impossible. If you can see and believe the invisible, then you can do the impossible. All right, let's bow our hearts and our heads uh, for a moment of prayer. Father God, I just thank you for your living word, Father. And I thank you for the Spirit of God that brings this word to life and turns it into a seed planted in our hearts, Father, that bears fruit after its kind. Father, I just thank you for the, your Spirit indwells us. I would just ask you to open my mind, our minds, to perceive and understand, our ears to hear, our eyes to see, uh, what you would show us. And Father, help us to be doers of the word and not hearers only, Father. We desire our lives to be changed into your likeness. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so you, if you can see and believe the invisible, then you can do the impossible. Now, that, that's how faith works. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen with the natural eye. Uh, and this is in Hebrews 11.1. 1. So faith is seen in advance what is not currently present in the natural. So uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence uh, of things not seen with the natural eye. Uh, the Word of God tells us that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Uh, God's creation is what we call ex nihilo, means out of nothing. God didn't start with some kind of material and then mold it into an earth and stars and all that. No, God just spoke. He just spoke. And uh, uh, things came to pass. That's his, the creative power of the Word of God. Now, he, here's the important thing to understand. We are made in the image of God. Now, does God have an imagination? Imagination? Uh, that's what we're talking about here, the imagination. Now, uh, God has an imagination. The Bible says he sees the end before the beginning. So in God's imagination, he decides what he wants to do. And he, know, he knows what he wants and, uh, before it exists. And then once he knows what he wants, uh, he just speaks it and it comes to pass. Just speaks it and it comes to pass. Now, you and I are made in God's image, so we have an imagination. And that's the uh, very, very important part of our makeup. All right, And if we don't understand what the imagination is all about and the power of the imagination, we're going to miss out a lot on a lot of things. There's a saying I heard many years ago, uh, whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, he can achieve. Whatever the mind of man can um, conceive and believe, he can achieve. Um, I have a friend, his name is Kenny, and uh, he's a builder. And it, it, he always used to amaze me because he'd find the most complex jobs or situations and something like that in a big construction project. And uh, it looked mighty complex, but he, he would go home and then he'd come back the next day with a plan and immediately just pull out the materials and the tools and bang, 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 it, you know, he'd accomplish it. And I saw that happen over and over again. And I said, well, how do you do that? And he, he just said, well, I just lay down and start relaxing and, and I begin to conceive in my mind, you know, I see myself doing the whole project, you know, and sometimes I go the wrong way and I have to back up, do something different. But uh, by the time I'm done, the whole job is already done in my mind. Whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, he can achieve. Now, uh, let me um, read a very, very important scripture to understand. Mankind was given dominion over the earth and all life. Okay, Man was given dominion over the earth. Now, there's scripture Psalm 8.3 says this. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. 
you have put all things under his feet. All things. Man, uh, Adam was originally created and uh, given a commission. Take dominion over all the earth, the, all the creatures, everything, you know, will be subject to you. Okay, so God was God over the universe or over heaven, you know, but he made man God over the earth. Okay, and uh, so this is so important to understand that, that God has ordained that mankind have dominion. And we exercise that dominion with words uh, just like God does. But in order to, uh, for those words to come to pass, those words bring to pass the things which we have conceived in our imagination. Okay, We first see it and believe it, and then it will come to pass. Okay. If you can see and believe the invisible, then you can do the impossible, all right? Now, man originally was supposed to take dominion over the earth, but under the uh, supervision of God. And so that what man would decree or declare on the earth through words, because that's how a man uh, exercises his dominion, his authority, then God fulfills uh, their word, okay? Uh, so there's two different things we're talking about here. There's, there's uh, authority uh, or dominion and power. There's two different things, okay? And I'm going to illustrate that with when God, when Jesus gave the Great Commission in um, uh, Mark 16, uh, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, and these signs will follow those who believe. They shall lay hands on the sick, they shall recover, they'll raise the dead, they'll cast out demons, and on and on. You know, but then he told them, he just gave them the commission, all right? But then he said, but wait until you get power from the, you know, uh, first. So he said, they, they went to Jerusalem, and they tarried in Jerusalem for 120 days in that upper room, and then bang, comes the Holy Ghost. Well, that's the power, okay? So Jesus had already given them dominion. He'd given them the authority uh, to go out and do what Christ did, okay? Uh, the things that I do shall you do also, and even greater things than these shall you do because I go unto the Father, okay? And what's he do when he, you know, goes unto the Father? He sends the power, the Holy Ghost, Okay. Uh, so just like Jesus, every time he did something, he didn't say, it's not me, it's the Father in me that doeth the works. Well, the same thing is true for us. So when we exercise our dominion under the, the authority of God, we express our authority by words um, which describe our imagination, what we're believing for, and then, uh, the, but the power comes from the spirit realm, okay? The power comes from the spirit realm. Okay, so that, that's the difference. Authority versus power. All right, now, here's the problem. When Adam and Eve sinned, they severed their spiritual relationship with God. All right, so no longer could they exercise authority under the power of God. Okay, now Satan, they bowed their knee to Satan. Okay, and so now, all of a sudden, Satan is the god of this age, in a sense. He's the ruler over this earth. Now, what's important to understand, he, he becomes the power to fulfill his will through people on the earth that are subservient to him, okay? Uh, because mankind changed his god, okay? Uh, Satan became the god of this age, the Bible says, okay? Now, uh, so I want to remind you um, about Nimrod, okay? This Nimrod, you remember, was a wicked man. Uh, the, the Bible, I'm going to read from Genesis 11.1. 1. It says, now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And they said, um, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower, the Tower of Babel, whose top is in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth. Okay, now notice this. It says, the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. All right, and he said, indeed, the people are one. 
and they have one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose will be withheld from them. In other words, God just said, there is no limit to the evil they can accomplish. And, and what, what did it have to do with language? Because remember, mankind has dominion over the earth. And it's exercised through words, okay? The authority is exercised through words. But since they're disconnected from God, the words that they say are now from the evil one, okay? From the, the, the God of this age, okay? Satan works through people whose hearts are yielded to him. All right, God works through people whose hearts are yielded to him. So when mankind, in particular, let's say um, Nimrod, he yielded his heart to Satan. And so Satan basically put in his heart, in Nimrod's heart and mind, what he wanted to accomplish. And, and it would be conceived in the mind of Nimrod, I'm going to build a tower and, uh, you know, have these false religions and all these kind of things. And he would voice it, speak it. And when he, when, um, he spoke it, that those words were anointed with the devil's power. Okay, so because, like I said, we have dominion and we exercise it in the earth. But the power comes from the spirit realm whether it's evil power or the power of God, okay? And that, that's so important to understand, and that's why words are so extremely important because virtually all words have an anointing. If, you know, Jesus said, the words that I speak are not my words. I only say what I hear the Father saying, you know? And so uh, Jesus, when he spoke, they were the words of God. They had the anointing of the Holy Ghost, of the Spirit of God on them. That's why they had power, okay? Uh, Jesus exercised his authority, but he said, of myself, I can't do anything. I can only say and do what I hear the Father saying and doing. So as long as he was under the dominion of, of the Father, he could uh, bring to pass uh, the will of God in the earth. And, and so Every single human being, basically, uh, is designed to be a servant from the spirit realm. We had authority over the earth, and, but depending upon who we're uh, servant to, whether it's God or Satan, then, then we become a pawn, in a sense, a servant to that authority. Okay? So when sin entered the world... Uh, mankind lost his connection with God, and now the devil has free reign over the people in the earth. And whoever hears his word, uh, you know, and begins to verb verbalize it, say it, and believe it, uh, begin to conceive in their mind, in their imagination, the, what the devil wants to accomplish and do, then there is no limit to what they can accomplish, okay? So God's, uh, what did the Lord do in order to stop that, this proliferation of evil? He scrambled their languages because that was the key. There was only one language in the earth at that time and they would all come into agreement and the power of words is such that once anointed from the devil, then they have power in the earth to accomplish the devil's will, okay? Uh, that's so important to understand. So be careful what we say. Uh, you know, there is a scripture that says, Every idle word that thou shalt speak, thou shalt give account thereof at the day of judgment. For by thy words shalt thou be justified, and by thy words shalt thou be condemned. Man, that's powerful. That means at the end of our lives, the, God's going to bring up all the words that we spoke. And, and that's what he bases our judgment on. And the reason is those words, uh, if I speak the devil's words, if, you know, even James tells us that, uh, you know, a good tree bears good fruit, a bad tree bears bad fruit. Um, and it says the, that when we, when a Christian speaks, uh, James warns that, that both blessing and cursing can come out of the same mouth, okay? 
curses come from Satan, okay? And when a, a person is uh, tempted or like, for example, I don't know, let's say somebody insults you and your flesh rises up and you want to give a piece of your mind, uh, then, you know, the, that's not the new man in Christ that's wanting to, you know, take revenge. That's not. No, that's the old man. That's the old man. And when you verbalize uh, something and say something nasty to them, well, guess where the anointing comes from? It comes from Satan, okay? So the, the, out of the same mouth can come both blessing and cursing. So we must be very, very careful what we say. Uh, James chapter 3 is really worth reading uh, to find out the power of words, okay? All right, now, um, so uh, God works through people. Satan works through people. Now, let me just say, until a person is born again and has the Spirit of Christ in them, God cannot work through that person, okay? Uh, because they don't have a spiritual connection to God, okay? So uh, that's why... Uh, a, uh, a natural man, what the Bible calls the natural man, the Bible says the natural man understands not the things of God. He cannot know them because they're only spiritually discerned. The natural man is a person descended from Adam and Eve. He's got the sin nature and, and he has no connection to God. He cannot understand the things of God. He cannot discern what the Spirit is speaking. Uh, and so he's easy prey to the devil. Uh, to get him to work for the devil, all right? So, but, and so consequently, uh, people fall into all kinds of sins and, and various rebellions, hurting other people and creating just terrible things, you know? And, but when a person re has a realization that, man, I, you know, my life is a mess. I, you know, I need a savior. And they hear the gospel, you know, and they uh, submit themselves to God. The Bible says, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out and that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Okay, so there's a change in kingdom. The Bible says there, a person who's born again is translated out of the kingdoms of this world and into the kingdom of God. So, uh, and now he is under the authority of God and no longer under the authority of Satan. Now, sometimes we have to read the word to find out who we are, okay? I am uh, whatever God says. Once I'm born again, uh, if I want to know who I am, I don't remember all my past because that's not me anymore. The, the old man, that's the old man, and he is crucified, okay? Uh, that's what Paul said. I have been crucified with Christ and it's no longer I that live, but it's Christ that lives in me. So if you want to find out who you are after you've been born again, you look in the word. Okay. And that will tell you that you are more than, than a conqueror through him who loves you. Okay. And that sin will not have dominion over you because you're not under the law, but under grace. Okay. And now the words that we speak, if they're in line with the word of God, see this you know, this is, it's all about thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God wants to bring to pass his plans in the earth, but he has to work through people whose hearts are yielded to him. This is such an amazing thing. God cannot work in the uh, earth except through a man or a person whose heart is born again and yielded to him. All right. The same thing is true for the devil. Cannot work in the earth except through a man or a person whose heart is yielded to him. Because when we exercise our authority through words, then that an, the anointing, depending upon the source of the words, the, there's a spiritual anointing that comes along with it to bring it pat, to pass. That's the power that comes from the spirit realm. Okay. Think about these things. This, this is astounding. Uh, when God showed me this revelation, it was just amazing, okay? So um, now here's what's important to understand also. God absolutely cannot make you do anything. And Satan cannot make you do anything, okay? Uh, there is a scripture that says, um, Be sober, be vigilant, for the devil is a roaring lion, goeth about seeking whom he may devour, Okay? Well, who determines whether he can devour me or not? Well, I do. 
you know, if, if he tempts me and I listen to him and, and, and then do what he says, then I am coming under his authority. You know, Satan works through people whose hearts are yielded to him. God works through people whose hearts are yielded to him. But neither Satan or God can force us to do anything at all. We're the ones that have to uh, submit ourselves, just choose, choose this, choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the devil. Or I'm sorry, we're going to serve God. Okay, that's what Joshua said. Uh, Moses uh, had a statement similar to that. He said, I call heaven and earth as a witness before you this day that I place before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Okay, now, uh, so, so much of the time, you know, we're, we're looking up, waiting for God to do something. All right. But I want you to know that God has done everything necessary to you walk a completely victorious life in this world. Absolutely everything. All right. The Bible says all things that pertain to life and godliness have been given through the knowledge of him. All right. And whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature. What does that mean? It means you can be like God. You can, you know, you can do the things that Jesus did. You can accomplish what God wants you to do as we yield ourselves to God. Uh, and that's the key. All right. And but along comes the devil to try to deceive us, just like he did in the Garden of Eden. So it's very important to know the Word of God because Thy Word is truth and forever settled in heaven, O Lord. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of truth. You know, uh, Jesus said, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So um, that as we yield ourselves to God, then, then He can work powerfully through us. All right? The Bible says that the eyes of the Sovereign Lord search over the whole earth seeking someone through whom he can show himself strong, whose heart is perfect towards him. See, God can only work through people uh, whose heart is completely yielded to him. And he can work powerfully through that person, all right? Because they're submitted to him, they're obedient to the word, they, they listen to the Spirit of God, and they voice the word when God uh, speaks to them and and they uh, begin to speak the word of God, they are coming into agreement with God. There's a scripture in Amos that says, can two walk together except they be agreed? We have to agree with God, not disagree with God, for God to work through us in the earth. We have to agree with God. And so we need to avail ourselves of the word of God so we can know what God's will is. Uh, sometimes people say, well, I don't know the will of God. But, well, the will of God is in print. It's in the Bible. And the Spirit of, of God, as you study and seek God, He will direct you every which way He wants you to go uh, so that you uh, are not, you know, tripped up by the deception of the evil one. Okay? So, um, God's Word, the uh, Bible says in Isaiah 55, it says... Uh, my ways and my thoughts are not your ways and your thoughts. Just my ways and my thoughts uh, are higher than your ways and thoughts as much as the heavens are above the earth. Okay, And he says, just as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, it causes it to water the earth and, and, uh, bring, and give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return to me void, but will accomplish that for which I sent it. So God in heaven uh, gives us the word. And the word is like a seed that will bring to pass what God wants to accomplish in the earth. He has to work through people whose heart is yielded to him. All right. Now, uh, let me say this. What, what is a decree? A decree... Uh, is basically uh, some words that form a law, a law. A decree becomes a law once spoken, okay? And um, to give you an example, a mother and a dad can decree some things in the household. You know, you 
As soon as you get up, you got to make your bed, you know, and then it becomes a law, okay? Or don't get up from the table until you finish your meal or, or whatever. Mow the yard, <laughs> you know, so parents uh, have authority over their house. A mayor may decree some things that then become law in a city, all right? Uh, Congress may decree some things, a court or a judge may decree some things, then they become law, okay? Now, uh, what's important to understand is God's words are way above anybody else's words. And God's word, then it cannot be broken. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. It says, does he speak and not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Of course not. He cannot lie. And, and God will watch over his word to perform it. But he has to work through me. So when I speak God's word, declare God's word, decree God's word, then I am coming into agreement with God and he can do what I say. Okay? Here's an amazing thing. The Bible says, command ye me. This is God. God saying to his people, command me. Command me to do what I said I will do. Okay, when Solomon was uh, dedicating the, the Solomon's temple, um, he prayed. And of course, they made a lot of sacrifices and had singers and all these kind of things. But uh, he basically uh, spoke back verbatim, word for word, uh, the promises that God had given his father David. And, and there's a lot of profound promises, okay? Um, and that, uh, so, but he, he just quoted them back to God. And then he looked up to heaven and he said this, now, Lord, do what you said, do what you said. Now that sounds kind of bold and maybe, <laughs> you know, an affront to God, but God loves it. That's simply an expression of faith to command ye me. That's what God says, command me. You know, but it has to be what he says. I have, I can only pray for and expect fulfillment of what he says, because it's thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And he desires for me to come into agreement with his word. And as I do so, he can anoint those words with the Holy Ghost and bring it to pass. And that's just exactly the way Jesus wor worked, okay? He spoke what God said. He, he, that's what he said. The words that I speak, these are not my words. I only say what I hear the Father saying. You know, So uh, the same thing is true for us. We are created in God's image, this imagination. You know, If we can see and, and conceive in our minds basically the Word of God and, and then begin to voice it, voice it, bring it, and, and God will then uh, bring it to pass, okay? Uh, but that's a gift that God gave mankind for this, um, this thing called an imagination, okay? But it's so important that we use it for, for God and, and don't get tricked up and use it on self, because a lot of people do that. They, they, you know, they have a bumper sticker on the back of their car that says, God is my co-pilot, okay? And, and which means that I'm the pilot, but I got God in my back pocket. If I need something, I'll pull him out of my pocket, you know? God's never the co-pilot, okay? You know, God is supposed to be in charge. He's supposed to be in charge. And, and so we're to be yielded with God, not serve self and our self-interests, the flesh, uh, but submit yourself therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you.